Okay, in this video, I have some ordnance. I recently got a hold of some uh, training aids here. I will put the link in the description where you can get these for a decent price. I have here a Soviet F1 fragmentation grenade and what would be an RGD5 fragmentation grenade. This one is black, it is rubber, this is the trainer. The real one would be made out of uh, sheet metal, out of steel. It would be green to a yellowish, tannish green in color with the markings showing it's an RGD5. These markings over here show that it is a trainer, so that is what you would see indicating it's an RGD5 other than obviously its shape. Now there are some differences with these grenades compared to the US and I will mention that. I will mention some differences also on how these are used, their employment and that stuff. But first we will go over some of the uh, technical details and stuff on them. Not all inclusive, but this is just need to know information if you would ever find yourself in possession of the real thing for whatever reason because of defending yourself. Now, the Russian F1 fragmentation grenade, it has a cast iron body. This was designed during World War II, produced up into early in the Cold War. These are still in the inventory of the Russian military. They're still used by militaries around the world. So they're out there. They still make an appearance. These contain around two ounces of TNT. The total weight of it is around a pound and a quarter. So one pound, four ounces around. And that's because of the heavy cast iron body. Now, the fuse on it is a UZRGM fuse, the same type of fuse that is employed with the RGD5. This fuse optimistically has a time of three to four seconds, but when you look at NATO Intel stuff, manuals from back during the Cold War, for Russian grenades, they said figure one to three seconds. Yeah, not like the U.S. stuff where you have a reliable three to five seconds. So these things, it's pull the pin and throw, plain and simple. Now, the average throwing distance for the F1, a trained person can throw them 30 to 45 meters. The uh, kill radius on this is around, or the wound radius is around 30 meters kill radius is around three to five meters, give or take. These are also copied by the People's Republic of China where they are known as the Type 1 Fragmentation Grenade. Now we'll move on to its replacement, officially the RGD-5. Uses the same fuse I only have one fuse between the two of them. So I have to switch them out whenever I'm going over something. It would look like that, but like I said, it would have a green body. The RGD-5 is the official standard fragmentation grenade for the current Russian army. Carry over from the Soviet army. Adopted by the Soviet Army in 1954. This contains four ounces of TNT, so twice the amount of explosives. Uses the same UZRGM fuse. The weight, because it is a uh, stamped metal body instead of uh, cast iron, or, is around 11 ounces, so it weighs a lot less. 
This is uh, copied by the Chinese military where it is known as the Type 59. Maximum throw on this is 35 to 45 meters. Fatal range is around 3 to 5 meters. Wounding range around 25 meters. With the possibility that you could end up with someone getting a uh, piece of shrapnel out to 30 meters. Compare that to the USM-67. Your kill radius is around 5 meters. Wound radius out to about 15. And some stuff says kill radius is out to around 15 meters. The M67 has more explosive than the RGD-5. The M67 also uses Comp B where the Russian grenades are using older TNT. Now the fuses work differently than the US ones. And I will demonstrate. This comes into play for if anyone were to ever use them in a booby trap. Now with the US fuse, if you can see as it's going up, you had the little striker right there. As the safety lever comes up, the string pushes it, spring pushes it forward to hit the percussion cap and start the firing chain. On the UZRGM fuse, we still have our safety lever. That's our striker right in there. The pin that's in there. And it does not take much movement of this safety lever to let that pin fly. There's a spring in here pushing it down. Push it down into the primer, starting your time element, and then setting off your cap. Another thing you may have noticed, the position of the pole rings. On the M67 and US series, it's on this side. And with the US grenades, you're taught to grasp them, hold them like so. Safety lever to the meaty part of the hand, or the right back here, holding it like so, so that you can access the pins. Russian military, pins on the other side. They teach their people hold the F1 and the RGD5 like this. Safety lever towards the fingers. There is no secondary safety clip like on an M67. There's just the one pull ring. So grasp it like so, pull it, throw it. And remember, time, one to four seconds. Now another major difference between the M67 US grenades, RGD5 and the F1s is how they arrive. The M67 and other US grenades come inside a little uh, cardboard tube, cardboard can. You peel off the 100 mile an hour tape, pull the top off, the grenade is already assembled, sitting inside the bottom half of the can. You just reach in there, pull it out, it's assembled, ready to go. That's not the case with the Russian grenades. This is the best picture I can find showing how they arrive. The grenades arrive separated. Bodies over here, 20 to a crate, and then over here two cans, and each one of these coffee cans holds 10 fuse assemblies. Now I watched a video on someone opening up a brand new crate of RGD5s. I mentioned, uh, showed you the markings here, what to look for for RGD5 and Cyrillic. The markings for that on the crate are down here. 
It'll tell you what series of grenade or what is in here. You open it up. Each one of these grenade bodies is wrapped in paper and has a shipping plug. The shipping plug will either be a uh, green or kind of a brownish color. This is training. These coffee cans over here will also be wrapped in paper. So before you put your grenade together, you're going to have to unwrap it from the paper. You're going to have to open up one of the coffee cans. And I do not believe they included a uh, can opener in the crate, so it's kind of use what you got. Uh, the person that I watched in a video used a P38 on it and opened it up just fine. Then pull out one fuse assembly, unwrap the paper. And then you got to screw the two together. Yes, I know there's no blasting cap on this, it's a trainer. Screw the two together. Make sure it's snug. And it'd be ready to go at that point. So you have to assemble the grenade before you can use it. Unlike US and other NATO ones which are already pre-assembled. Now, for those of you that remember the TV show Deadliest Warrior, one of the episodes they had U.S. Green Berets versus Russian Spetsnaz. And the Green Berets mentioned they used both during the invasion of Iraq. They said between the two, they preferred the U.S. one because it has more, more explosive in it, has a bigger kill radius, and they said produces a bit more shrapnel. But they said the RGD-5 works just fine. But it's just not as much power as an M67. Now, another difference I should mention here, when these activate, with an M67, for those of you that never served in the military, you hear a little pop. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of smoke coming out from the fuse also. Sometimes, not always. But you pop off the secondary safety clip, pull the ring, let her fly, safety lever comes off, striker comes forward, sets it off. You hear a pop from the primer starting it off. With the UZ RGM fuse, and I've seen this and heard it in a few videos, it's a very loud crack. U.S. stuff, it's a lot quieter. This is very noticeable. It almost sounds like a uh, pistol shot. It's, it's pretty loud. So, something also to be aware of. If you have a uh, self-defense group, or you're uh, looking to collect examples of these, like I said, there will be a link in the description. I'd recommend getting a hold of some so that you can do familiarization training and stuff. I personally would not actually pull the pin on this and let this activate because trying to reset this fuse is going to be a pain in the butt. I have no intention of ever actually pulling the pin on this and then showing it. So, because all this striker is just held in here by a compressed spring and there is nothing in there to keep that striker from flying out once it activates nothing and I personally don't want to go looking for all the pieces but uh, you can get a hold of these decent price they're not like they used to be a few years ago when you could get them for ten dollars a piece I think, uh, shit, what was it? I paid like $30 for one, $20 for the other. And only the F1 came with the fuse. They didn't have any spare fuses to put in the RGD-5s. So, yeah, if you want to do good recognition training, get an example of both. 
Once again, make sure, recognize the Cyrillic writing showing it's an RGD5 for looking for on the crate. I've noticed that the Russians tend to use the same style of crate for multiple things. So you may think you have a crate of grenades and you open it up and find out it's a crate of ammunition. So there you go, some guidance on some foreign ordnance. Now, for those of you that might be flipping out about, hey, I, I'm teaching terrorists how to use these, guarantee they already know how. The chance of someone here in the U.S. getting a hold of a live one of these, pretty damn low. But you never know. We could wake up one morning and we got uh, Russian peacekeepers uh, going through the streets. We could have Chinese paratroopers falling out of the sky. And some of them might have grenades like these. Now you at least have an idea on how to employ these. Maybe you uh, take out a uh, Russian checkpoint, traffic control point, you find some crates of grenades. Hey, now you know how to uh, put them together to employ them against their former owners. So always remember Wolverines, and for all my uh, engineer brothers in the Patriot Militia Movements, always remember SAONs.